for one, greatness is being sown into you through the word. Y'all get great teaching here. That's a great seed. That's a that's great material to start with. Then y'all get taught and trained through greatness. You get you have great examples before you. You have all the great, and then most importantly, you have the spirit of the great one available to you to live. going to get into our message. Our scripture is coming from the book of Proverbs, the very first chapter, Proverbs chapter one. <laughs> and I will be reading verses one through five. And I'm going to actually read them in the um, Passion Translation. So the book of Proverbs chapter one verses 1 through 5. Here are kingdom revelations, words to live by, and words of wisdom given to empower you to reign in life, written as proverbs by Israel's King Solomon, David's son. Within these sayings will be found the revelation of wisdom and the impartation of spiritual understanding. Use them as keys to unlock the treasures of true knowledge. Those who cling to these words will receive discipline to demonstrate wisdom in every relationship and to choose what is right and just and fair. These proverbs will give you great skill to teach the immature and make them wise, to give you the understanding of their design and destiny. For the wise, these proverbs will make you even wiser, and for those with discernment, you will be able to acquire brilliant strategies for leadership. Father, we thank you for this day that you have uh, gathered us here in this place, dear Lord. We thank you, Father, for just another day, another opportunity, Father, that we have gathered here in corporate worship. Dear Lord, hallelujah. We just, we just are so in awe right now, dear Lord, of you and all that you do, Father. We thank you that we are here at this present moment, dear Lord, to worship, to praise, to, to hear from you, dear Lord. And I am your oracle sent on assignment, dear Lord, to speak what you have given me for your people, Father. Let all that I say, all that I do, dear Lord, glorify your name, dear Lord. Open our eyes, open our hearts, open our ears spiritually, dear Lord, so that we receive everything that you have for us to feast upon today, dear Lord. The words that you have given me to speak, dear Lord, they come straight from the throne, Father. I am here to hear. To, to, to heal, set free, and deliver those who may be in bondage in Jesus' name, dear Lord. Not under my power, not under my might, dear Lord, but under your authority, dear Lord. So I thank you and I praise you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 All right. So this is the second to last Sunday of 2022, y'all. And guess what? We did it. We did it. God gave Apostle um, the It's Time to Build theme for us for 2022. And for the last just, I guess, like 50, 50 plus weeks or, you know, at 50 weeks, we have been built up in ways we didn't even think we could be built. Right? Yes. We got mad. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We rolled our eyes. We cried. <laughs> <laughs> we pouted. And we were stretched, but guess what? We survived. And yes, that's that's what happened when a lot of the messages that, you know, Apostle taught that, you know, I spoke, looking in the chat, you know, just hearing the, the different, you know, chatter from the, the after of the of the message. That's how we felt with some, you know, some of the things we got, man, like, oh, you really stepping on our toes this morning, Apostle, what's, what's going on? You know, wow, you really stretching us, prophetess, wow. But we survived. So we survived the demolition and the clearing and the grubbing. We built the foundation and the infrastructure. We built divine doorways and bridges. We built an understanding of time and character reference. And we even built an embracing of our assignment. Okay? 
So when you couple all of that and just, you know, there's, those are just some a few of, you know, the, the different things that we built throughout the year. But when you couple all of that um, with what we built this past year with our focal text of Proverbs um, 1, 1 through 5, here is what God wants us to continue to build. It's time to build accountability. Mm -hmm. It's time to build accountability. So when we look at our focal text, um, which is, of course, from the book of Proverbs, it's referred to as the book of wisdom, okay? And this chapter, now, you know, Proverbs was pro primarily written by King Solomon. There were maybe a couple of chapters um, that were written by other um, people, but, you know, this particular chapter, of course, was written by King Solomon, and the purpose of Solomon writing these proverbs was to impart wisdom to his son, or well, his sons, because we know Solomon, you know, he had some, 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 some concubines and wives and, you know, so, but anyway, but he, you know, he wrote this to impart the wisdom to legacy to his sons to, to you know, to what hold to and, and, and hold on to as they grow. The wisdom that he shares now, watch this, is not mere head knowledge, okay? Solomon is imparting a divinely enlightened understanding of what is good and what is evil and a personal experiential um, knowledge of the Lord. So that's just, you know, giving you a, a, a brief, um, you know, background of, of uh, Proverbs and kind of just, you know, giving you a little little history. Now, when in, in correlation to our focal text and just, you know, as we are winding down to 2022 and even to our, you know, series today, this, you know, message is kind of like the review before the final exam. Okay. You know, because of course next week is the last Sunday in 2022. And this is, you know, kind of almost like, all right, this is like that almost like that review of what we've learned all throughout the year and then you know when apostle comes next week it's final time you know but we can't think that in one day and i know you know we have some, some scholars in here students in here whether you know you've been long removed from school or if you're presently in school you know you can't think that that you know you could cram learn or cram study everything in one city okay it's 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 that's not how it works it's totally possible i don't care who you are some people are like oh yeah i can crave everything it, no because you will forget something you, you you can't all that we've been taught all throughout this year we can't cram it into one you know one moment thinking we'll learn everything from you know even even before demolition to up until where we are now, because we were, we got some good stuff. We got some good teaching, some things that, you know, over time we'll go back and watch it. And even when you watch the messages again, you're like, oh, wow, I didn't hear that the first time. Let me. So when, when um, you know, when I said like this is like the review, the word review is defined as the process of going over a subject again in study okay the process of going over a subject again in study or a recitation in order to fix it in the memory or summarize the facts yeah that's good a lot of people you this is why it's always so important to 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 look and get a better understanding get the definition of some of the words that you say in order to so recitation in order to fix in the memory or summarize the facts go over again which means you've already learned it you just need that refresher right you know review is like that refresher you just need to commit it better to memory we have the theme it's time to build the sub themes are the different things that we focused on each sunday with accountability you know shoring curing the different things those are the sub things so we have to we know those things we just have to get that little refresher that little you know bring it back to our as the bible says bring it back to our remembrance so and that's even um when and and when i talk about memory it's not this memory it's 
this memory. It's this memory because when you look at Psalm 119 and chapter 11, the, the King David talks about this. He says, I have stored up your word in my heart that I might not have sinned, that I may not sin against you. So storing up the word, committing it to memory in our hearts where we may not sin against him. So that's Psalm 119 verse 11. And I read that in the um, English Standard Version. So now when we look at the word accountability, okay, because we got to understand we're building accountability so we need to know what we're building. So accountability is defined as the obligation to explain, justify, and take responsibility for one's action. Accountability is defined as the obligation to explain, justify, and take responsibility for one's action. All right, so now when we look at accountability, the, the, the one part where it talks about this, let's look at explain or justify something, okay? Because this is, this is the accountability right here. We need to be able to explain or justify who we are as sons of God, what we believe as sons of God, and why we believe as sons of God. That's the accountability. So that you know, we what what what, what are, Titans? What are we being? We are being equipped so that when we go out there, and when someone you know tries to to not necessarily challenge, because well you know there are going to be people who challenge. There are going to people who, who be people who question. There are going to be people who you know. We need to be able to explain why it is that we because i'm telling you when you meet other you know people whether they are atheists whether they are buddhists whether they are hindu whatever they are firm in their beliefs and they will almost try to browbeat you to believing what they believe but a lot of you know a lot of christians they don't want to offend so they kind of just downplay their beliefs and <laughs> it's 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 funny um Every time uh, around this time, you know, the, the, the Charlie Brown Christmas, you know, that cartoon comes on. And it wasn't until, you know, recently, you know, you always just, just you know, watch. I think because, you know, looking at it through a different lens. But when Linus gets up there with his blanket and he starts talking to him, you know, and, and he's like flat footed about this is the reason Jesus is the reason. And when you watch it, you're like, you better preach, Linus. That's how we have to be. That's how we have to stand, you know, flat-footed, confident, and be like, this is why I am a son. This is why I believe what I believe. That's the accountability. And remember, we have been and we're continuing to build a kingdom people. That's what God is doing. He's building a kingdom people in us. But, he, but there comes a time... When we have to let the air out of the balloon. Hmm. And what I mean by that is, what is it, or what, and, I, and I wish I had a, a balloon here, but y'all can kind of, you know, get this image with me. But what good is it if all that we've been taught, all that we've been taught, it just stays in that balloon? We have to let what we've been being equipped with, what we've been, you know, being poured into us, we have to let it out to those we come in contact with. And that's that's pretty much the Great Commission. That's the Great Commission that Jesus talked about when he told his disciples. And that is found in Matthew. You can, you know, just write it down. Um, the book of Matthew 28, verses 18 through 20. So in, in, in the particular verse, 20 talking about teach them and this is what jesus said teach them to do everything that i have commanded you that's letting the air out of the balloon so as 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 the disciples they walked with jesus who as they walked with jesus and as they saw and as they learned and as they witnessed all of that was in them so in verse 20 of matthew uh, 28 he's like teach them everything that i've commanded you let the air out of the balloon 
It's time for you to pour out all that I've poured into you so that others may become disciples, so that others may be compelled, so that others may wonder, well, what's, what's this all about? Who's this guy? That's what he wants. That's the accountability. Another, um, let's go slide. Come on. <laughs> all right, there we go. <laughs> Gotta love technology, right? So remember that the, the second part of the accountability um, definition was take responsibility for one's actions. Ooh, that one right there. How many of us do that, right? So, um, <laughs> Apostle and I, we uh, we watch a lot of uh, crime, you know, solving shows, and he, of course, is going to blame me. Because, you know, I, I do like those, the CSIs and the NCIS. And then even last night we, we were watching, um, you know, one that we found on a different channel. He was like, what's this? What, 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 what are we watching about? Pizza? And what, what? But, you know, and it's, it's so funny because even now we've watched so many, like, we, we, we already know what's, but like, you know what? That's who it is right there. You didn't see that, but anyway. But usually, and, and you know, in watching these shows, usually, and I have to put usually because one of the first things that an officer or a detective does um, when they're arresting someone is read them their Miranda rights, okay? And the second line of the Miranda rights is the key. Anything you say can be used against you in a court of law. Accountability. Accountability. And this, um, a scripture that, that goes with this is Romans. Chapter 14, verse 12. Romans chapter 14, verse 12. I am saying this slow because Apostle always says that I speed through my scriptures and don't give him time to put them up. So, amen, amen. <laughs> so, uh, this, this verse reads, So then each of us will give an account of himself to God. This is accountability, you know. Anything that we say, and, and this goes both ways. Anything that we say, you know, can be used against us. So we have to make sure what we are saying comes from this book right here. This book right here. This is, you know, you always hear the, the, the cliches on the, the Bible is the B-I-B-L-E, the basic, ba basic instructions before leaving earth. The, this is our blueprint. This is our roadmap. This is our guide. Yes, it is because there in 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 the 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 I don't know. You don't want to say the sad thing, but the interesting thing is there are people out in the world that know this book better than we do, That's right. mm -hmm. and they use that against us. Mm -hmm. You know that well. The Bible says this, and the Bible says that, and if we don't have Psalm 119.11, the word hidden in our heart, right. we can't be like, well, no, actually, the Bible says this. Right. We have to have that confidence, you know, be accountable to say, well, you know what? This is going back to what I believe as a son. This is why I believe it. So we have to know what the instruction says. We have to know that word so that at the time, God's going to be like, what what happened right there? What what happened? But it even goes to this. People as as you know, apostle one of the messages that you know is just constant in in his life is the streets are watching. People are we we never know and it's now especially with social media. It's just like people are constantly watching. People slide in our DMs. I think what you're doing is great. How can we help? But and, and, and you just have to, um, I'm sorry, I had a moment there. Ooh. Got dizzy for a second, sorry about that. But, but we have to be able to, you know, stand on what we believe. Stand on what we believe so that at that time, you know, when, when something comes up and someone challenges us, we can stand firm so that, you know, later someone will be like, wow, I, I like how you stood up to that person. You know, 
he was a bully or he was this, how did you stand up? It wasn't me. It was the God in me. And that opens a door for witnessing. Amen. All right, so we're um, you know, we're being we're being filled and we're being equipped so that God can get a return of investment or an ROI from us. He is trying to get um, a return of investment. Now, this is it. If 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 there's no return of investment, if we're being spiritual hoarders of what we're learning, hmm. we can't keep everything for ourselves. What is the purpose of that? Why all of the, you know, the, the, the information that, that, you know, in the, in, that we're being equipped with, all of the knowledge, all of the wisdom, we can't be spiritual hoarders. Who, who is that benefiting if we're holding on to all of, you know, the, the, the time to build, you know, what we're being equipped with? First Corinthians chapter 12 you know you can write this down because i'm not gonna you know we're not gonna go there and i'm not gonna read it but first corinthians chapter 12 verse uh, 12 through 27 talks about us being one body and although we have different roles we function as one right you know hand arm leg all of that and this the, the example that god gave me last night i just totally cracked up so I don't know if you've ever, you know, seen commercials or, you know, if, if you work out, if, you know, you see this person at the gym, but you ever see the person who, you know, who the, the, the guy, it's usually a guy, um, he's like all buff, you know, arms, chest and everything, walking, you know, like this big, you know, but then you kind of look down and you look and you're like, oh my gosh, why are his legs so skinny? And the joke is the person skipped leg day. That's how we should not be as a body. We can't skip leg day. That's how we spiritually hoard. When we just focus on one particular part, we neglect the other part. That's what we're being spiritual hoarders. And that's what the Bible is talking about. We should not be this way. We should, you know, focus on every area of our body. In the book of James, um, chapter 1, verses 22 to 25. You know, when, when, when you hear some people like, oh, the Bible says this, and oh, the Bible says that, and oh, the Bible says this, and oh, the Bible says that, but they're just talking. They, where's, okay, you say the Bible says this, but are you living what the Bible said is, you know, are you living what you're saying the Bible is saying? And that's when you look at um, James 1, 22 and 25. And I'm reading this in the message. It talks about um, don't fool yourself into thinking that you are a listener when you are anything but. Letting the word go in one ear and out the other. Act on what you hear. Those who hear and don't act are like those who glance in the mirror. Walk away and two minutes later have no idea who they are what they look like but whoever catches a glimpse of the revealed counsel of god the free life even out of the corner of his eyes sticks with it and is no and is no distracted scatterbrain but a man or woman of action that person will find delight and affirmation in action that's what you're talking about you know the people you know there there are people who just oh the bible says this and the bible says that they're being spiritual hoarders. They don't have accountability because they are not living out. They're not walking in all that they've been, you know, ingesting and, and, and talking. Let's put some work behind that talk. Um, another uh, in this, I think this is the last scripture. First Corinthians chapter 13, verse 11. And, and I'm reading this in the uh, Passion Translation. 1 Corinthians 13, verse 11. When I was a child, I spoke about childish matters. For I saw things like a child and reasoned like a child. But the day, the, but the day came when I matured and I set aside my childish ways. That speaks to us, y'all. The day has come for us to put to test what we have learned. The day has come for us to be confident of the God 
in us. We have to stop doubting. We have to stop cowering. The day has come for us to be accountable. We have to ask Holy Spirit to show us the areas where he's building that accountability in us. The areas where he's like, okay, you know what? You, you, you've been you've been a little you know quiet in this you know and, and this is the thing we know what we know because we have the we we know because we're, we're getting taught and we're and, and God is, is is building us in a way that you know it's it's not um, faulty it's not there's no untruth to it but what we have to do is say okay Lord what are the areas in which I'm still doubting or what are the areas that I'm still um, unsure or not certain and allow him to reveal those things so that we can be accountable so that when we have to go out and and share why we are um, why we believe that we are sons what what our beliefs are we can have that confidence and we can walk boldly in it so let's allow God to build the accountability in us so that when we go out on the streets, when we go out, when we at work, when we're at school, wherever it may be, he will be glorified in our actions. He will be glorified in, in all that we do and in all that we say. Amen. Amen. I pray that this word um, was, was you know encouraging and I pray that this word who was edifying to you on, on this day. Amen. Amen. Let's just give God um, some praise for this word and let's uh, praise God as um, our apostle comes up. Amen. 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 Hold on. Hold on before you go. I know, I know Prophetess wants to sit down real quick. I know she wants to get off her feet, but um, we're going to be obedient. We're going to be bold. Amen. We're going to be obedient. We're going to be bold. Because um, we're accountable for everything, including, you know, including me. So I want y'all to press your hands toward the screen right now. I'm going to pray for prophetess because Satan ain't like y'all being told y'all need to be accountable. He tried to attack the prophetess as she was being obedient. And we're going to anoint her with this oil and we're going to pray for her. So wherever you are in this place or um, at home, I want y'all to pray for your prophetess in the name of Jesus. Because the enemy is not pleased. He wants y'all to keep shifting the blame. He wants y'all to make it someone else's job. He does not want y'all to let this word to take root. Try to stop it with everything he could do. But we will come against that thing right now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Father God, we pray right now that you touch your prophets in the name of Jesus. That you continue to keep your hands of protection on her. Hallelujah. And we rebuke any attack in the name of Jesus that has tried to put itself upon her, Father God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Protect her mind. Protect her body. Regulate everything chemically and mentally and physically inside of her right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, and we tell, hallelujah, anything that is unlike you, hallelujah, to be gone in the name of Jesus. Satan, we rebuke you in the name of Jesus. The Lord rebuke your attack. You are a liar, Satan. Hallelujah. And we send that lie back to the pits of hell from which it came. Get away from here in the name of Jesus. And we bind your prophetess with the healing of God. And we bind your prophetess with the deliverance of God. And we bind, hallelujah, your prophetess with the wholeness of God in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And we believe that it is done. Hallelujah. We believe that it is done not because of theatrics, but because it is your will. Hallelujah. That we be whole. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Hallelujah. God is good. God is great. I'm a, I, I want y'all to understand this. Hallelujah. You got to be accountable. For real, for real, for real. And the devil's not out here playing with us. He's not out here playing with us. And I don't have no idea why some believers continue wanting to play with him. He's not. It's not a game to him. He is, he, he is as a lion, seeking whom he may devour. No if as he's he he's not <laughs> he's not warm and fuzzy. He's the cold prickly. And you gotta understand that. But I thank God for the word. Accountability. 
We are accountable for what we know. We are accountable for what we're taught. Um, you cannot, you can no longer say you didn't know and walk around in ignorance. Be accountable because souls depend on it, not just yours, but others. People are looking for you to be light. You're, you're accountable for the light that God is giving you. You're accountable to be, see, you're, you're accountable to be the designation that he has called you to be. If you a son, be a son. If you a daughter, be a daughter. If you don't just be walking around talking about I'm, I'm loyalty, I'm kingdom, be kingdom. Don't just don't just wear the shirt. Don't just wear the shirt. Don't just put the cross around your neck. Don't just don't just look like it, live like it. Don't just look like it, live like it, sound like it, smell like it. When they let they they they, they should see you when you're coming. High beam on them. High beam on them without a shot. So that they will not be confused. So that they won't have to guess. We were, I'm, I'm, I'm a close. We were at our celebration of life for Mother Morgan. And I love what the grandchildren and the great grandchildren said about their grandmother. They said, if she don't make it into heaven, ain't nobody make it. She was a light. They knew without a shadow of doubt what she was all about. What she, like, if she didn't make it, then nobody make it. That thing stuck with me. They were watching her. Like my wife said, reoccurring theme like the streets are watching. Them kids, grandkids, great, great, great grandkids were watching her. And they knew what she was about. The world needed to know what we're about. Be accountable. Hallelujah. Be accountable for who God has called us to be. Amen. Amen. Father God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for life. We thank you for health. We thank you for strength. We thank you for everything that you have poured in us. We thank you for the construction, the building that you have started within us, the work that you have begun, and you will bring it to and expect it in. Not our end, not, not our blueprint, but your blueprint. Not our will, but your will be done. Hallelujah. Not for our glory, because you alone are glory. You alone, you alone deserve the glory. You alone get all the glory in the name of Jesus. And you are just blessed us enough to be able to witness this, God. And we ask you as we continue to move forward in the weeks and the months and the years to come by that you continue to watch over us. You continue, hallelujah, to multiply us. You continue to build upon build upon build, Father God, hallelujah, that we reach, Father God, that you expand us, that you enlarge us, Father God, from our home, hallelujah, from our community, Father God, from our neighborhood and into the states and into the cities and into the further tributaries and into the countryside and across the seas and from nation to nation, Father God. You continue to build and attach until we reach the four corners of the earth, Father God. And then you can come back, hallelujah, for a mature bride, God. A mature bride, God. You're Jesus, you said you're coming back for a bride, but you're not just coming back for an immature little girl. You're coming back for a mature bride, hallelujah. He who is developed, God, develop us, equip us, hallelujah, so we can be that acceptable bride when the bridegroom, hallelujah, comes through, hallelujah, bursting through the clouds, bursting through the crowds, hallelujah, to receive us back into his own, Father God, mature us and develop us, hallelujah, so we will be acceptable, hallelujah, when you return and see us. These things we pray in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen.